You are welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Last time, I have given you the several available tests for detecting heteroscedasticity. You remember I said that there are graphical ways of detecting them, and we went through some of these graphical analysis on how to detect heteroscedasticity. All of it. When is it heteroscedastic? When is it unbiased? We went through the details of that. So you can check all of the previous videos and you see. Now, how do you check? We've indicated that you check graphically. Okay. And so we showed some graphs. Okay. We plotted these graphs that you see on your screen, the plot gene multi. We use a residual versus the fitted plots. We show the non-linearity, non-normality, the scale location, and all of that. We were able to show most of this. Then we mentioned the several tests for heteroscedasticity. So there are several tests for undertaking heteroscedasticity. Before we come to those tests, I just want to give you the theoretical test. We have the pack ln test. These tests are slightly different from each other. The PAC LM, if you will check it carefully, I just want to show you something interesting. If you check that test carefully, you will notice that you are taking the log of the square residuals. The residuals are the error terms. You take the log of that. Then you regress that on the explanatory variables and then you will now calculate the test from that the Gleiser LM test is a similar thing like that you do the similar thing the Harvey so the Gleiser one that one you don't take the log but you just take the normal residual and then you find the absolute value of the residual and regress it on the independent variables the Harvey Godfrey test you would take the square of the residuals just like this. Okay, you take the log of the square of the residuals and regress it on the independent variables. So somebody might say that, what is the big difference between that? Well, the thing is that in the pack, the independent variables have also been logged. But in the Harvey Godfrey, the independent variables have not been logged. The good fed and quant test is for cross sectional, it's not for Pagan Godfrey test. It is a residual square. Normally, when you take a square of the residuals, remember the residuals are negative and positive. So when you take the square of the residuals, you are making it all positive. So you square it and then you regress it on each of the independent variables. The white test is very popular. It's probably one of the most popular. You take the square of the residuals you regress it on the independent variables, the squares of the independent variables, and some interaction of the independent variables. So you can see that in this last one, you have the x1 multiplying the x2. They are interacting. They are interacting. And one of the ways sometimes you might interact is all the impact curve. And then you calculate the test. The cohen Cabasset test, okay? That one is a very, very simple. You regress the residual square on only the dependent variable square only the square of the dependent variables the null hypothesis whenever you want to check for heteroscedasticity now that you all understand okay the null hypothesis is always saying that the coefficient okay the the the, the, the there is no significant difference across the coefficient okay the differences across the coefficients are zero. The alternative is saying that at least one of these coefficients differ from zero. That is a residual coefficient. One of them differ from zero. And at least one of the independent variables affects the errors, the variance of the errors. What is the decision? All of those things are theories, but the, key, the most important one is the decision. You always reject the null hypothesis. You reject it. When do you do that? You reject the null hypothesis 
Okay. Only if the test statistic is greater than the critical value. This is a parametric test. And by the way, for your information, for all parametric tests, whenever the test statistic is greater than the critical value, you reject the null hypothesis for all parametric tests. Whenever the test statistic exceeds the critical value, you reject the null hypothesis. Now, when you are rejecting the null hypothesis, what are you concluding? Well, basically, when you are rejecting the null hypothesis, then what you are concluding is that there is a significant evidence of heteroscedasticity. So it means that heteroscedasticity exists. That's all you are saying. You are saying that heteroscedasticity exists. Because the null hypothesis says homoscedasticity. And so if you reject the null hypothesis, then you are saying that there is no homoscedasticity. Now, the best way to understand this is when the p-value is less than 5%. So when the p-value is less than 5%, what it simply means is that we have a situation where there is heteroscedasticity. So heteroscedasticity is there when the p-value is less than 5%. So this means that you are always praying that the p-value is what? Is more than 5%. So that if the p-value is more than 5%, then you can say the residuals are homoscedastic. And if they are homoscedastic, you are good to apply. Okay. Now, let's pick on one of these tests. Okay. I, I, like I said, I want to believe that we did this. Okay. But when you pick on one of these tests, so you go back to your gene multi. Okay. If you have not loaded, you have to load it. I'm going to show you mine. So this is my R that I'm going to show you here. This is my R. It really, really hurts me that I'm not able to normally zoom in, you know. And, and that when I zoom in, I'm not able to see the when I zoom in I'm not able to see I'm not able to zoom the zoom is not able to allow me to zoom in that is a point okay? zoom application appears not to allow me to be able to zoom in. And I don't know why. I've been trying a million times. So if I, if I go to my magnifying glass, and I even use a magnifying glass, and I try to zoom in, it's not allowing me. And I've been trying and trying and trying and trying. I don't understand. So right now I've zoomed in, but you guys will not know that I've zoomed in. And that is a sad part of, of all this. Anyway. So, but I'm sure you can take your time and you can, if you stretch a little bit, you can see. I wish there is a way where you can, you know, show the results in big size. If there is a way, that would have been fantastic, eh? Let me see. I think I'll try it next time to see whether it is possible to view the, okay, zoom in is plus plus. And then, okay, so let's see. Um, uh -uh. All right. Oh, it should have been nice to zoom in. Oh, dear me. I think you guys can see something. Is this getting zoomed nicely? Let me see. Yeah, I think it's getting bigger, right? If it is getting bigger, type yes. Yeah, I think it's getting bigger. Yeah, something like that. 
Okay. Okay. Well, the good thing is that it appears that it's getting bigger. So let's try the data set. So this is it. So for, for us to begin, we got to load the data set. Okay. So I want you to look at not where the cursor is, but here. So I'm just going to type the data. Remember, it's always read dot delim, okay, into bracket. You bring your double apostrophe and then type clipboard. clipboard. That's what I wanted to do with me. Clipboard. Let me see if I can zoom in slightly. Clipboard. Ah. All right. So once you do that, that's it. This is where we are. Clipboard. And then, so this is, I'm just going to copy the data in Excel. Okay, so please, you must have your data ready in Excel. So you must have your Brukuti data. This is something that you all know. So I'm just going to show you my data set in Excel. So you just load the data. Control. A to copy, Control A to highlight, Control C to copy. When you come to R, you don't paste. If you have your R, work along with me. So you come to the R Studio, you don't paste, but you go to where the read dot the link is. You bring in a hash symbol just to indicate the end of the command. Then once the cursor is anywhere here, you click the run at the top. Once you do the control enter, you come down, you see the data is showing down here. This we have gone through it a billion times. So this is a data set showing down here. Now, once you have this thing loaded, you just want to invoke the LM test. You want to invoke the LM test. Okay. Remember, we are doing this work and i need to just show you to remind you this is it we are trying to check whether there is heteroscedasticity so you must have installed this lm okay you must have installed it and then you invoke it with the library lm test everything that is blue here we highlight we run it and then you now use the bridge pagan cook ways back test this one this is going to test whether there is heteroscedasticity or not. Okay, so let's go back and then run that in the studio. So that is already here. The LM here is I've already installed it. See if you haven't installed, you click install package here on the right. You click that install package. The pop-up will come, and then in this pop-up, you can now type the LM. The results will be down here. Now that it is invoked, I can now go ahead and run my BP, the bridge pagan test for the data. But you see, at this stage, I've not run the data. So I need to run the data. So I need to look for that data and run it. So I'm just going to search for the data. This is the data. Okay. I'm just copying this data and bringing it to this section here. Just so that. It will look nice. There you go. So I've loaded the data. Now let me run the gene multi. This is a gene multi. Okay. Okay. So I use a, a different command. Let me just use the normal one. Gene multi summary. And that's it. 
there's a result down there in the center. Let me raise this thing up slightly, and then you will see the result. So this is the result for each of the variables. That's, that's what we had the last time. Okay. That's, that's exactly what we had the last time. Okay. And you can see the command. So now that I've run this, my analysis, okay, we shall do panel data, and that's where the beauty of all of these things. Okay, so let's look at the bridge pagan test now, because I'm I'm running the bridge pagan test on the formulated gen multi. So this test, what I'm doing here is I'm testing whether there is heteroscedasticity or multi or homoscedasticity. So this is a result down there in the console. The most important thing is checking the p-value. We remember we said that whenever the p-value is less than 5%, it means that there is homo, there is heteroscedasticity. Okay, if it is homoscedastic, the p-value must be bigger than 5%. Okay, so now that the p-value is less than 5%, it means that we have to reject the null hypothesis of homoscedasticity and go for the alternative hypothesis of heteroscedasticity. So what this means is that the bridge pagan is helping us now to realize. Now, what the bridge pagan did, which you didn't see, is what I'm about to show you, which we spoke about. Okay, this is what the bridge pagan did. If you remember those mathematics, you see this one there at the top. This was the bridge pagan for LM. And what the bridge pagan did, which you didn't see, is that it took the residuals of the gene multi we had, it squared the residuals, it regressed the residuals on all of these independent variables. Okay, it regressed the residuals on all of the independent variables, extracted a chi square, and then pa, 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 all of them was done within a second. And then it gave us this result. It gave us this result. Okay. So the data was the data was the gene multi result. So you can see that the bridge pagan test statistic. So it has calculated a test statistic, compared a test statistic with a chi square degrees of freedom. The independent variables you can see. Okay, the degrees of freedom is eight. Okay, n minus one independent variable, and then it has calculated and given us a p value which shows that everything is heteroscedastic. Now, this is another one, okay, GQ, okay, which is another test that we usually have. Okay, where is that? Um, this is Goldfeld and Quan test, the GQ. Of course, I didn't give the formula here, but there's a formula for that. Okay, and what that Goldfeld and Quan test was also to give us another you know, situation. So the Goldfeld and Quant test, this is a command you use for that. If you run this command for the Goldfeld and Quant test, what it will do is that it will give you another p-value. And if that second p-value is less than 5%, it means we have heteroscedasticity of the residuals. So let's go and check that. We already have the command there. And again, you can check this command in news. So you do the Goldfeld and Quant test. You run that. Look down there. There you go down. Okay. It has given us a p-value of 50%. Okay, 50%. So interestingly, the Goldfeld and Quant test, and I think somebody asked this question some time ago, that the Goldfeld and Quant test is telling us that there is no heteroscedasticity. Okay, that's what it's saying because the p-value is way above 0.05 percent. But then the bridge pagan and bridge pagan test is telling us there is heteroscedasticity. Okay. Now this is where sometimes a researcher might be in a dilemma. So what do you do? Well, sometimes you can juxtapose and cross-check it with other ones to get it. Idea. Or you can also decide, okay, I'm going to go with my gut feeling. I'm going to go with bump this. 
I'm going to go. I love, I mean, who wants to work further? I love the fact that the thing is almost scholastic by the gold feather and quant test, so why don't God I go for that? Okay. But technically, the gold feather and quant test is for panel. It's not for cross-section. So that could be a minus in that regard. Nonetheless, when you have a tie like this and you are satisfied, you are satisfied with your results you've seen, especially you want some results to be negative, they are negative, you want some results to be positive, they are not positive. You want some results to be, to be, you know, um, you want you want some of the results to be significant, and they are actually significant. Okay, so you will go with the one that is giving you the those particular results. Okay, if not, you can go ahead and run other tests. So this command gives us more. There's a library called Scadastic. You can you can install the Scadastic command the scadastic package and then you can library it out into the you know our studio here and when you invoke it you can use this command the white lm test you can use that to run the results okay so this is a white lm test okay. let's run the results and you see down there okay this is it the white test is indicating a p value of zero so the p-value of zero here is indicating that we have heteroscedasticity you can do the goldfeld and quant test remember we've already spoken about this okay and that is the same 50 percent or 51 percent as we indicated that this is usually for panel and this is for cross-section actually okay and so that is good that is 51 percent and then you can check the Cooks and Welbeck test. Okay. You can do several of these tests. Again, that is showing what? 6.4%, which is more than 5%. So again, there's homoscedasticity. Okay. And then Gleiser test. You can run that. That is showing heteroscedasticity. Okay. So <laughs> the beauty is that sometimes if you use different things, so at this stage, somebody will say, so what do I do? Well, like I said, you can just go with the one that is saying there's no heteroscedasticity, and you're done. Finish. Okay, you can do that. Or you can decide, if you are not having significant results, you can go ahead and correct for the heteroscedasticity. There's another package you can use, the OLSRR. Okay, that one too can give you results like this. Okay, again, this one is showing 0.2%, which shows there's heteroscedasticity. That's a bridge again. Okay, point zero six percent or yeah, zero six percent that appears to be showing, you know, homoscedasticity. Okay. This is showing heteroscedasticity, and the last one is showing hetero. So there are several of these that you can deal with to be able to come out with which one you want to go with. But I'm gonna assume that there is heteroscedasticity in this data. And these are our results. I'm going to assume that so that at least I teach you how to handle it. Because it's not just a matter of, okay, there's no problem and so we leave it. But I'm going to teach you and then you will now know and master how to handle heterosclerosis. So we come back and learn how to handle hetero.